Well, people like to raise their trucks, you know, or give them the body lift or stuff like that. You know, their S10s, pickups, 4x4s. Well, there's an extreme body lift. Chubby and Tubby, who were working on this thing on the weekend, couldn't get the motor out, couldn't get the heads off. Poor babies. They worked hours and hours on this machine. So, one and a half hours for Dave Rock, and he's got the whole thing lifted. Now just got to cut some engine spaghetti, and we're ready to roll. Strong old tractor, that's for sure. That motor's actually still good, even though they ripped it all apart. <laughs> even the motor mounts are ripped off. They jumped it so high last year. That's why all the fan blades are broken. Oh well, a couple snips and we're on our way. Now we're real flying high. Super high. Sweet. Well, you just saw the first photograph. So what does a big old oil tank that's used for heating someone's home have to do with a little Chevy Blazer? Well, my debauchery of vehicles for the last several years has been limited to front wheel drives. I decided to change a little and build something kind of unique. You know, like at the brutally fast Aries Turbo Shelby Z Wagon, or the frugally fuel efficient turbo diesel minivan. Well, this time it's something with rear wheel drive. Recognize that? Yep. It's not Chevy powered anymore, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm building a tank. Fully operational and mobile. And, unfortunately, it's going to be automatic. But my 82 Toyota Celica that I took, of, took it off of way back eight years ago, well, that's what I decided to use. If you build a tank, it has to be very dependable. And, of course, 22R motors are very dependable. It's fully mounted right now. I use trailer hitches as motor mounts. Got the transmission support bracket in too. So now my next project is to cut up the drive shaft. Got a mark added to it. And add it to that drive shaft, which I've got a mark added to it too, where they've got to be cut. And hybridize two drive shafts, which isn't a big deal. And when you're doing that, hopefully one fits inside the other. You cut one a lot longer, you slip it inside. And to make it fit right on both ends, you wrap you know, black electrical tape around it so it fits perfect. Black electrical tape around the other end. Leave this tape set back a little bit. Then the two pipes are parallel to each other inside. Then you can just weld one end and it comes out as a nice balanced drive shaft. Looks awesome with those wheels. If you're curious to refresh yourself on the car that motor came out of, it was a brown two-door Celica. And I think the video was called Sprint Car Jumps, Car Dies. We were just bashing the hell out of a sprint on one of the big hills in the pit and jumping it. And this kid pulls up with the car wearing a winter coat on a summer's day. He says, what's all that shit falling in my hair? And I said, oh, that's just rust and dead spiders. So I'd love to hear it roar again back to life. But I had to scrap that car. It fell apart. It was too rusty. Well, we'll get back to the project. Chop, chop. That's what i got to do to the drive shafts now. Now do they fit? Oh, 
away. Let's see. Oh, yes! And they fit so perfect, I don't even got to use tape. Well, Chevy was meant for Toyota. So I guess GM did own part of the company for a while. You can tell. And that motor fit right in just perfectly. Absolutely like it was made for it. I did move it back two feet for better balance control and handling. High speed battles and pursuits. Well, she's in. Just needs a weld. And you don't shove them all the way back in when you're setting a distance. You have to leave them out about three quarters of an inch because when the differential goes up and down, the axle or the drive shafts goes in and out a little. So, yeah, you don't want it ramming your transmission when the distance changes. So I gave it a little grind for a good time so that all the weld sticks really nice. And it's raining again. That sucks. Six days out of seven now it rains this year in Canada. I think we've only had like 15 sunny days in 2011. And a special mes message to a loyal fan in Holland that sent us all wooden plaques for Jen and Crazy British Bloke and Redneck Rickham and myself. Well, they all have their plaques now. Jen got hers the latest because she hadn't been here since last year. But when you walk into my building, it's all painted up. And everybody can see it every time they enter. That's where it's been placed. Thanks, man. That's awesome. Still got the box that came in, too, and the letter inside. Well, maybe I didn't pronounce that name right. Just a little bit of wind. Joe's or Josh? Anyways, thanks, man. And whenever you're welding something like this, you want it to be nice and concentric for balance. Always make sure you do three or four little tack welds first because welding causes contraction when it cools and things will move more than you expect. Tack weld number one. Number two. I'll do three. Now for a full radial weld with a notch cut in it, so it's not fully radial because that might make a fracture. So I'll weld around the notch too. Done! Looks good, I guess. Cool. So it's several hours later after the last part of the video. Probably about five hours. I've got a battery box installed. Lawnmower blade holding up the Toyota power steering reservoir. Sort of a custom made return line for the power steering fluid which isn't under really any pressure. Tricky part was I had to use the GM high pressure line which pointed the wrong direction and add it to the <laughs> to the pump that makes the high pressure for the power steering so I had to get a little piece of line there and did some brazing some copper and joined it all together and checked it visually for leaks so hope it's okay it's got the radiator in it from the floppy cock van and the transmission cooler from the floppy cock van which isn't installed yet but the rad's installed um, now when you want to start a old Japanese engine up to keep them idling they have this thing called an idle cutoff solenoid on North American cars if they're idling too fast and you shut them off they would have run on people didn't like that you couldn't shut your it would just keep going clunk -a clunk -a clunk and almost like not want to shut off forever. So anyways, I've got power going to that little solenoid and when I hooked it up it clicks. I've got the battery wires on, which I've had to custom make from scrap farm cars. This one engages the starter. I've actually put a little prime in the car, but I haven't tried to crank it yet. 
since there's been prime, I'm assuming this is a positive wire to the coil assembly, and I've got the coil assembly with the igniter pack mounted to the rocker cover. Hopefully it's grounded and making spark, but I haven't checked that yet. I don't even know if it's got tranny oil in it, but hopefully it's in park, so it won't go anywhere because the drive shaft is all hooked up. But I do have the starter motor solenoid wired through the neutral safety switch, so I think it'll be fine. Now I did squirt a little prime into the fuel line, which on a engine with a fuel pump, it allows it to go all the way through to the car because fuel will still flow in the same direction, even if the pump's not working, that it would flow normally. I will eventually hook up the f a return line and an input line from the stock lines that came with the vehicle, and I still have the stock tank. I'll just have to bypass the electric fuel pump. It's not a big deal. So... Let's see what's going to happen. Uh, I'll set the camera up on a tripod. All I'm going to do is jump the wire of the starter motor right to the battery for the solenoid, crank it and play with the carb and see if we get lucky. been sitting eight years, so this is an old start, cold start, just in my motor pile at the back of the building. All righty, the big test. start cold start. I didn't try no hanky panky and try to start it in between. Cool. It does sound like the carbs a bit dirty. It probably was when I put it away. It didn't idle that, that well. Anyways, we're in for some good times. The beginning of the tank. <laughs>